Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be going over the complete ingredient list for the thyroid medication level thyroxine. Now to do this, we're going to be using the data provided by the FDA for this medication. This is the uh, original PDF documentation, which is what you're seeing in, on your screen right now. When we talk about these medications, it's really important to understand what's found inside of them because their ingredients can impact how well or how well they don't work for you as a thyroid patient. When looking at thyroid medication, we have two classes of ingredients that are important for all medications, but particularly important for thyroid medications. We have the active ingredients, and these generally don't cause problems for thyroid patients. And then we have the inactive ingredients, and this is usually where a lot of the problems arise. Now, what I wanna do is use the documentation provided by, this, this, um, uh, by the FDA regarding what these inactive ingredients can do for you. So this is in reference to level thyroxine. Hypersensitivity reactions to inactive ingredients, we're gonna be talking about those in just a second, have occurred in patients treated with thyroid hormone products like level thyroxine. These include urticaria, which is hives, puritis, which is itching of the skin, skin rash, flushing, angioedema, which is swelling of the face, various gastrointestinal symptoms, including abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, fever, arthralgia, which is joint pain and aches, serum sickness, which is a constellation of symptoms, and wheezing. So this is why these inactive ingredients actually matter. They can cause a lot of problems. In fact, they, the side effects associated with these inactive ingredients can be so profound that the medicate, just switching from one class of medication to the other, uh, or I'm sorry, switching to a different medication, even within the same class, like for instance, level thyroxine to synthroid or synthroid to level thyroxine can make a huge difference for you as a thyroid patient. And it has everything to do with these inactive ingredients. So let's talk about them right now. Now, the active ingredient found in level thyroxine is thyroxine, it's T4, that's it, that's simple. The, the problems tend to arise in these inactive ingredients. So here we have magnesium stearate. Now this one gets a lot of attention and I'll, I'll go over kind of what these are and what they mean. Magnesium stearate um, is a flow agent. It helps, it helps when the manufacturer is producing a lot of these pills so that the manufacturing process doesn't get clogged up and slowed down. Now, a lot of people, I wouldn't say a lot, but some people can react to magnesium stearate. In fact, I, these are, this particular ingredient is found commonly in a lot of supplements. In fact, I used to have it in some of my supplements, but I've recently swapped it out uh, for a rice concentrate called Nuflow. And it serves the same purpose for the acting as the flow agent, but it's a lot more, uh, it's well tolerated by, by patients. So magnesium stearate can be a problem, but isn't a big one usually. Next, we have microcrystalline cellulose, which is basically wood pulp. It's just a filler agent. The reason you need these with thyroid medications is because the actual dose of the active ingredient is so small that you have to make up the difference. You have to have some bulking agent to make up the difference. Otherwise, you'd have you know, a couple kernels of, of uh, like salt equivalent uh, of a dose, which is too hard to get precise. And then we have colloidal silicon dioxide. And this one doesn't tend to cause problems, although it can. Silicon is actually very beneficial um, for patients in general. In fact, I have it in some of my other supplements, but not in this form. Um, I have it in a, in a different form called MMST, but silicon can come in various forms. So this one generally doesn't cause a lot of problems, but it can. Then we have sodium starch glycolate, and that this ingredient is really a dissolvent. So what it does is it allows the thyroid medication to dissolve rapidly. And you actually do want this you want something to do this job, but you don't necessarily want this one because the problem with this particular ingredient is that it's either sourced from rice, potato, wheat, or corn. And there are a lot of patients, depending on you know which medication you're using, it could have a different source. Um, and so it's you have to look into each individual medication to figure out which one you're which which source they use. But they obviously corn and wheat those can cause problems in certain patients. But of these that are listed. Not very many of these cause the issues we're about to talk about, but in addition to all of these inactive ingredients, the, there are color additives added to each strength or dose of thyroid medication, and that varies based off the color of the, the strength that you're using. So for instance, if you're taking a 25 microgram tablet, that will include all of the ingredients we talked about, the active ingredients, the inactive ingredients, and now FDNC yellow number six, aluminum lake. So you're getting all those active and inactive plus some color additives, 
And the whole reason these are added is just to change the color of the pill. Hopefully so that you don't mix up pills so the pharmacist can get you the right pill. That's the idea behind it. Now we don't really have to do that, but these are added as an old school method and they've been maintained for a long period of time, so they are here. Now in the case of the 25 microgram, there's not very much. You'll notice that the 50 has no extra color additives. So if you are taking level thyroxin, getting the 50 microgram dose is always preferred because you get no additional color additives. But you can see some of these like the the 100 has DNC yellow number 10, aluminum lake, DNC red lake blend, DNC red number 27 lake, DNC red number 30 lake, etc. So you're getting quite a few extra dyes and it's these dyes in addition to some of those inactive um, ingredients that I mentioned that can cause the problems. Now the good news is you don't necessarily have to deal with this because there are other medications which are far cleaner. And if you're interested in getting a cleaner alternative to level thyroxine, then I would strongly recommend checking this video out, which goes over tyrosine, which is one of the cleanest thyroid medications on the market.